Now, cyclohexane, as I mentioned, it is a triple structure cacolactone radiated acids from where we can produce uh, nylon 6 or nylon 6 6. There are two different types of nylons which essentially goes into these automotive industries. And of course, from adenine, we can produce pharmaceuticals, uh, uh, there's a paracetamol, so the product paracetamol are produced from the alcohol canine. And prolegin is used uh, for the dyes and intermediate application. So that's the whole uh, benzene value chain. Now, uh, it will be interesting to know the power capital consumption of the benzene globally. Uh, if you can see on this chart, uh, Europe is always in PVS in China and of course from India. So, benzene power capital consumption is Europe is around 38 kg per person. If we talk about the Sahari, it is 38 kg per person, 12 kg in Cumin. Cyclohexane in China uh, is uh, uh, you know, in a relatively higher size compared to India and Europe. Obviously, India uh, is very less in per capita in terms of two kg, so that's the reason. There is an enormous opportunity for growth in Indian benzene downstream diabetes. Now, um, where the benzene is produced, if you look into these, the benzene is largely produced in Northeast Asia countries like Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, China. So, which consists around 51% of the global benzene productions followed by America, 15%, and West Europe is around 17%. And of course, there is a Southeast Asia, South Asia, that is India, where also uh, benzene is produced. Now, if you look into this, you know, last year, 2012 to 2020, we see significant capacity has been added in uh, Northeast Asia, primarily uh, from the commission of the new steam tracker units, refineries, uh, valley units. For the same period, Southeast Asia and India also added a lot of benzene capacities with the new refineries and uh, tracker uh, operations being commissioned. Now, the historically, the industrialized regions like, for example, US, Japan, West America, and West Europe have been seeing their capacity decline over the past decades because certain of the less efficient and older assets, as well as the restructuring of the uh, refining of the tanker complexes, uh, have led to the lower benzene production in these regions. One of the interesting uh, aspects of benzene production is that if you look at these top 15 producers, only constitute around 44% of the capacity. What does it mean? It means that there are a lot of small benzene plants that are available across the globe. So that means that day is very long. It's quite frightening to market in the sense. So how the benzene is produced? Of course, it's hydrocarbon and it's produced from the refinery. So if you talk about if the benzene is largely produced from the reformers, 38%, then through the pyrolysis gasoline, that's for the pine gas, 33%, transalkylations, selective TDP, that's the chlorine disproportionate, and the cocoven and PXC coproductions. So over 99% of the benzene, the unique thing is that the 99% of the benzene is a co-product, is a byproduct. Only 1% of the benzene is produced on purpose. That's the HDA, hydrogalkylation process. Uh, HDA units are normally operated to balance the excess chlorine to add into the higher value benzene. So if there's only 1% is on purpose, 99% is the byproduct benzene. Now, a few new rules of benzene are being exercised, uh, for example, uh, different things of like, you know, coal, NG of the natural gas liquids, or LPGs are, are also being you know, exercised, but it's a very nascent stage. So it's long way to go uh, to produce benzene through this organic free stock. Now, um, when you talk about there are various paths of the benzene interactions, but you know, the regional uh, heterogeneity you can see here, where uh, in EBS the refinement is predominant, followed by Europe and uh, China and India. The benzene, a lot of benzene are produced in Europe through the high gas path. Why? Because in Europe you see there are a lot of you know, NAFTA packers are there, and NAFTA, uh, when you feed NAFTA in the steam packers, you get the uh, pyrolysis gasoline. That's the reason India produces a lot of benzene through pyrolysis gasoline because in India there are a lot of steam NAFTA steam packers are prevalent. One of the interesting things is that if you look into this, you know, cocoa bin. in China, there are a lot of you know, benzene is produced through the cocoa bin. Why? Because there are a lot of steel productions are there in China. And that is the reason, you know, benzene through cocoa bin is very predominant in, in, in Chinese market. Uh, 
couple of you know, interesting facts of benzene is that due to the high octane value and possibility of the dual use of this benzene, or the chemical extractions of the energy by the gasoline pool, benzene supply and uh, demand remains hugely influenced by the development of the gasoline market. The historically low benzene to gasoline price will encourage the demand competition for the pipe gas from the gasoline then, then that's because if you have the pipe gas or pipe gas is gasoline, you can just sell it as it is because it can go into this gasoline pool. We don't need to really expect the benzene, but depends on the market scenarios and all these things. That's the reason. Benzene's operating rate is very low, around 70 to 75 percent. Why? Because you have the options to produce or not to produce benzene depending on the market dynamics. Now, uh, we have seen that various competitive paths and the uh, various paths of the benzene production. So now let's look at this competitiveness of these uh, benzene paths. For example, if you talk about the EDS and Euro, the capex, the capex requirement in the refinement process is substantially lower compared to TDP process, which is around 70 percent or 60 percent lower. Operating rate is also lower for the uh, refinement, of course, compared to other factors like locations of the plant, etc., also plays a very important role. Uh, the utility cost in the um, hydro uh, is very less because in other two processes like you know, reformat and the uh, uh, TDP, you need a lot of you know, places, high places, steam, and steam is not cheap. Uh, so that's the reason the utility cost is uh, comparatively higher in, in the reformat. Working capital requirement is the lowest in case of uh, reformat. The very interesting thing is that the byproduct credit, because when you produce something, you also need to get into consideration the byproduct credit. So if you talk about this refinement process, we can get a high value, mainly C6 plus uh, rising, and that's as a light product. But if you talk about the TDP and hydro realization process, we get a very low value C1 plus C2 uh, light products, which is not really giving uh, the market value. So net net, uh, the benzene cash cost is the lowest in, term in, uh, in case of the refinement, uh, followed by TDP and hydro realization in US and Europe. In China, also more or less the same thing on Northeast Asia, the trend is similar. Only thing is difference is that TDP here is less economically attractive because in TDP process we need a lot of uh, high pressure steam and the low pressure steam, which are very expensive in Asian countries. So that is the reason TDP is not really very popular in Northeast Asia countries. Now we'll talk about the prices of the ranking. So we we'll talk about 2020 to 2021. If you see, because of this pandemic in 2020, the benzene prices came down around 264 uh, with a maximum number of 671, with an average of uh, 460 dollars per ton, or um, FOB Korea prices. But in 2021, the prices have substantially recovered. It's almost double. The average value that you see is 911 in 2021. So uh, the, the typical breaking uh, numbers between uh, or spread between um, NAFTA and the benzene FOB Korea price is around two hundred dollars. So that means if the benzene price hovering around two hundred dollars more than the NAFTA prices, so the, the producers make a lot of money, or at least you know, they can be on break So if you see from 2021 uh, till date, it's quite uh, good. So the manufacturers of benzene are uh, making good money as of now. On the lower, lower side, another big market is US. That's why the benzene duty delivered at US lower cost prices. So if you see, there are a lot of benzene are you know, imported from China and from Korea to the US market. But the average windows was closed uh, till 2021. And now also it's closed because the freight rate has gone substantially higher. So if the delta between the US uh, FOB Korea price and the US uh, GDP price is more than $90, then the production can flow from the uh, Korea to EBS, otherwise it does not, it cannot flow. So that's what you know, it has been you know, uh, described in this price uh, graph. Now we took up trade in 2020, approximately around 8 million tons of benzene was traded across the globe. China and EBS were the two largest benzene importing countries. EBS imported around 1.8 million tons, <coughs> one part of which came from the South Korea. China imported around 2.6 million tons of benzene because there's China a lot of star producers are there. India, Middle East, and South Korea and Japan are the major exporting countries of the benzene. India exported around 1.3 million tons of benzene uh, in financial years 2021. 
the major destination countries are Saudi Arabia because there is a Chinese plant, Spain, Netherlands, China are the major destination countries for India uh, and Jean. In 2021, India imported around 2.94 million tons, while the US imported 1.5 million tons in 2021. Uh, in the US, the limited imports from the South Korea and the lower than the typical refinery dropping rates suppressing benzene uh, inventory in the US. There is inflation uh, uh, to supply to the US uh, as well as the limited SM molecules disrupted to Europe as well. So, Arbitrage Bill, as I mentioned in 2021, was mostly closed because of the very high trade rate and uh, the, the, uh, the traders were not really encouraged to uh, sell the benzene from the South Korea to Use. Now, what is going to happen in 2022? So, demand is uh, projected to continue bullish trend because there are a lot of styling uh, plants uh, starts up in the US and, uh, and, and in Asia. Uh, healthy demand we can expect from the polycarbonate and the capital regions, but the counter balances are that there are a couple of things that are going on around in 2022 that will have also a counter impact on the US banking demand. And another important thing is that in China, the styling production cost is going up and that could really um, you know, hamper the styling production which eventually will reduce the benzene demand. Now, if you talk about the supply side, the Chinese engine supply is estimated to increase by 19% to 40 million tons in 2022, uh, which was 12 million tons in 2021. So that means the Chinese supply will be a little long. And if you talk about the trade and the prices, uh, the benzene arbitrage from the Asia to the US is likely to uh, remain closed due to inadequate price delta and the high trade cost. In 2022, benzene down contract price is expected to uh, face more premium than the spot price uh, than 2021 because uh, there's a expected lower demand and a positive sentiment. Uh, of course, uh, if there is a three pounds of down in almost in China and in English, the US prices are expected to be flat to be lower. Historically, benzene uh, prices have been primarily driven by the supply side economics, but since pandemic, the demand side factors um, very largely direct on the price movement of benzene, and which is going to be a uh, similar kind of trend we can expect in 2022, at least for the first half of the 2022. Now I'll talk about you to the benzene in India. Uh, India is a net exporter as I mentioned. Uh, so it's 1.3 million tons of benzene is being exported. A couple of new plant capacities are being added. One is uh, HMEL, that's the Hindus Chemical Energy Limited and HPCL in Bardem, uh, which is expected to start by Q324. So healthy started and healthy announcement demand from phenol and control engines are the major demand driver for India uh, benzene. Now, uh, styling. So, although India doesn't do styling, but you know, India consumes a lot of styling, uh, which is being imported majorly from the Middle East, that is Kuwait and Saudi Arabia, North America, Southeast Asia, Northeast Asia. So, these are the major uh, sources of the Indian styling, which is now around 700,000 tons of consumption is there. Now, of course, there's a AOC, the national oil companies, IOC has announced one styling production, plant of 400,000 tons of capacity which is going to be operational by 26-27. So a couple of little bit of more uh, cumin phenol. Uh, cumin phenol is more or less balanced. Uh, 300,000 tons is uh, production from the demand is more or less the same. MDI, which is used in this you know, polyurethane industries, there is no production from MDI in India. So around 150,000 tons of MDI is being imported in India. LAB, despite the around half a million tons of the LAB production are there in India, we also import around 300,000 tons of Linear alkaline because there are a lot of uh, you know surfactant companies are there in, in, in India who can use KBD. Cyclohexane, so it's more or less balanced, a little bit of no exports are happening because Indian uh, cyclohexane is majorly challenged by the cheap Chinese cyclohexane product, you know, uh, uh, finished products. So that is the reason. So if you see the operating rate of the cyclohexane, is very, very uh, small, around 50%. Now, uh, last is the Toler Engine. So, Toler Engine is a little bit of no export uh, oriented market in India. So, we are having around uh, 100,000 tons of capacities, and the production is around 95,000 tons. We produce around 70,000 or 80,000 tons of uh, Toler Engines, and we export around 30,000 tons of Toler Engine. 
Swan always come close to my presentation, so in 50 carries, global current energy demand is 52 million tons, we expect that CAGR is around 2.9% by 2050, the benzene global demand will be 100 million tons by 2050. Over 90% of the benzene are the byproducts and uh, it's consumed by the four downstream segments, piling, methyl phenol, cyclohexane, and nitrobenzene, and in. 60% benzene is consumed in Asia, for the North America 60% and the West Europe is 14%. About 99% of the benzene is produced as the byproducts in Reformate, pyrolysis, gasoline, TDP, etc. process, and remaining 1% is on top of benzene. Cash cost of benzene is the lowest in case of uh, reformate process. India is one of the major exporters of benzene with 1.3 million tons of <coughs> uh, benzene export per annum. Thank you, and thanks for your patience here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, gentlemen, if you have any questions, can you?